What is up, homies? My name is Felix, and I'm here back again with another video for you all today. And in this one, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make post-punk type beats inside of FL Studio. Also, just a quick clarification, post-punk is a very broad genre. It basically just encompasses all of the different bands and genres that emerged in kind of like the late 70s after the era of punk kind of died out. And essentially, a lot of artists wanted to make something that was new and different from punk music, while also still keeping a lot of influences from traditional punk music. So basically, everybody took different routes and took influences from different areas. So that's why post-punk is basically just like a big term that encompasses stuff like gothic rock and horror punk and dance punk and new wave and all this other stuff as well. So now that that's out of the way, make sure you guys check out my Instagram and my SoundCloud down in the description below along with the playlist of songs I produce, my beats from my Discord, all that stuff. Go check it out if you'd like to do so. And now we can get into this video. So basically when people think of post-punk, there's like three main bands that they think of and that's Joy Division, The Cure, and The Smiths. So with The Cure, a lot of people consider them to be more gothic rock but they have a lot of dancey pop kind of songs and then also a lot of very goth rock sounding songs the smiths is definitely not one of those bands that when somebody asks you what post-punk is you're like this is what it is because a lot of their most popular songs that everybody knows are more pop-esque and take a lot of influences from like funk music and disco dance kind of stuff also they kind of stray further away from like the poster child the typical textbook example of post-punk which i think in most people's minds is joy division joy division is like that one band that most people know today that's a really good example of of post-punk. So yeah, with the beat that I'm gonna make today, it's gonna take influences from all three of these bands, mostly Joy Division though, because I know that's what most people are here to see. However, if you do want me to make a video more oriented towards the Smiths or towards the Cure, just let me know and I can do that as well. So the only thing you're really gonna need for this is gonna be an electric guitar, all the stuff that it takes to record one, and obviously FL Studio. So when it comes to the guitar playing part, like I said, post-punk is a very broad genre, so there's a lot of different options that you have. But like I said, I'm gonna be going with more of a Joy Division type vibe today. So you want some very dissonant sounding, I think is the word for it, chords. One really nice chord for that is a sus2 chord. I'm gonna be using just a simple triad version, which is like this. It's kind of a stretch, so this might be hard for some newer guitar players, but you basically just pick the root note and then you go one fret over it and one string down, and then one fret over and one string down again, and then you have this. And some may refer to this as the police chord because of this song, you know. But I'm basically just gonna put a capo on the second and then I'm gonna be going like this. And then I also might go to this or something. And then maybe I'll take the pinky off and add the middle finger down here, which basically makes this a major seven shell chord shape which is used in a lot of like emo rock music. So with this type of music, you usually wanna make multiple guitar parts. So I'm probably gonna do one section where I'm playing the chords as a whole instead of like picking them, like arpeggiating them. And then I'm also obviously gonna do a lead and everything in here. And then I'm also going to make a bass guitar sound out of this guitar. And here's a video on that if you wanna watch it. So inside FL Studio here, the first thing that I'm gonna do is just put together a simple little drum pattern. So with these type of beats, the drums are usually really simple and you're just gonna do a little something like this. You're gonna set your tempo to somewhere around like one second. 70 ish and then with your drums you kind of have two options you can go with some live sounding drums which is probably your best bet but also as awful as this is to say you can go with some stock drums because if you go in here to packs and then you go to drums and then you go to the kicks and the snares and you go to this snare right here the lin snare and there's also a lin kick as well these drum sounds are based off of the Lindrum drum machine, which was used a lot for new wave music. And I actually downloaded another kit that has a little bit better sounds. And I literally just searched Lindrum drum kit and I got these two sounds here. So what I'm gonna be using today is a combination of these drums and kind of some live sounding drums as well. But anyway, so what you wanna do is you wanna just put your kick on the first thing here and then put your snare here, your snare here, and then the other kick right here. And you're instantly gonna get this typical punk type of drum pattern. And this super common type of drum pattern is what I'm gonna be using today. But don't fret because there is some ways to spice up this drum pattern a little bit. So what we can do is obviously add in some more notes here and there, like something like this. You know, just whatever other variations that you see fit. Also what you can do is turn up your swing a little bit, which is this knob right here. Just gives it some more human feel. And then also if you wanna give it, you know, very much a lot of human feel, what you can do is actually play the drum sounds yourself using a MIDI keyboard or like drum pads or something like that. And just go up here to uh, record notes and automation and then hit the space bar. And then if it's really far off the lines because of input delay or whatever, you can just drag it a little bit over to the side. And then if you're using a layered snare like I am, you can just do copy and paste. And then you can go and do the kick as well. 
So once we have this, we're going to take a little bit of a break from the drums and we're going to go straight to the guitar because essentially we're going to use this as a backing track to record our guitar stuff over top of. So with your guitar, what you want to do is obviously go through your process of connecting it and everything. And then I'm going to load up Guitar Rig on here, making sure my guitar is tuned and everything. And with your Guitar Rig preset, you want something pretty clean, pretty simple, but just with a lot of chorus and reverb and delay and stuff on it. So I like to go to Jazzy Chorus and then just turn up the chorus knob like pretty much all the way. Also, if you have the option, you probably want to put your pickup selector thing in the middle on your guitar because that gives it a pretty good sound for this. Also, if you don't have Guitar Rig, not a huge deal. The main thing I'm using it for is just the chorus and the amp sim here, but you can find other amp sim plugins and chorus plugins obviously as well. And also we're going to be adding some more effects after we record this in Guitar Rig as well. So yeah, I'm going to record the first guitar part right here. All right, so I just recorded the guitar part pretty much the way I described it earlier and it sounds like this. <laughs> It's basically just those two chords and then I switch it up there at the end. So now what I'm gonna do is record a little guitar part and then turn it into a bass line. And I'm not gonna show that whole process because I actually have a video on that. But for this, if you want to, you can use some bass guitar one shot sounds or you can also use ample bass, which is a pretty good free bass guitar VST. All right, so I just made the little bass pattern. It sounds like this. Pretty basic pattern going on there, but when you're making your bass line, you want it to be something like that. Just a pretty simple up-tempo pattern following the bass notes of your chords. So now what I want to do is go in and record a couple other guitar parts. So like I said, probably going to do some chords and then also like a lead of some sort. <laughs> Alright, so I just recorded this simple little part with the chords. It sounds like this. And then I also recorded this lead, which actually took me a long time to do. So now that we've basically recorded all the guitar that we need to, we're going to go back to the drums here. And now we're gonna make this drum pattern quite a bit better. So there's quite a few different things that we can do with this drum pattern. One thing that you can do is add in an open hat and then also add in a regular hi-hat. So with your open hat, what you can do is you can click fill each four steps and then it'll give you this kind of sound right here which is a pretty common thing you'll hear with these beats. And also what you could do is go to your closed hi-hat and then do fill each two steps. And now we can turn down the velocity of every other note and it'll sound like this. Also, if you want to, you can add in a shaker. I brought in a loop here, but you can record it yourself really easily. All you have to do is just fill a water bottle with some rice or something and then you'll get a good shaker sound. <laughs> All right, so now at this point, we just have two things left that we need to do. We need to mix this beat and then we need to lay out the whole beat. So I'm gonna mix the beat first. The mixing isn't gonna be too complicated, but there's a couple important things that I'm gonna show you. So I usually don't do a whole lot when mixing my drums, but the one thing that it is pretty good to do, obviously it's still a preference like anything I show you, but I like to put some reverb on all my drums. So a way that you can do that instead of having to put a reverb on every single track is by hitting control and then selecting all the drums and then going to an empty track and then right clicking and doing route to this track only. And now all the drums are routed to this track instead of the master track. And then this track is routed to the master track. So basically whatever we put on the blue track here is going to affect all of the drum sounds. So I'm just gonna load up Fruity Reverb and then go to the small studio preset. And as you can hear, it already has a great sound and this is pretty much what we're gonna use for our drums. And now with all the guitar parts and everything, it's gonna get a little more complicated, but nothing too crazy. We're basically just going to go to each sound and then put an EQ on it. And with the EQ, we're just gonna cut out some of the lower end frequencies down here that we don't even really need. And then perhaps take out some of the high end because usually with this genre, you have more of a darker sound, so you don't wanna have a whole lot of high end and stuff. And then we're also gonna go ahead and add some reverb and probably a little bit of delay. And then also at this point, you can add in some more chorus if you think your track needs a little bit more. And then certain sounds, we're gonna make more stereo than others. So the main sound is not gonna be super stereo, but the lead probably gonna be a little bit more stereo. The bass is gonna be stereo, just whatever suits your preference really. Just a side note, I slowed down the tempo to 170 because it was a little bit fast for me. But anyways, now what I'm gonna do is just lay out the beat and everything. So we can hit split by channel on the drum pattern and then we can drag all the drum sounds in here like this and with the layout it's not going to be anything too complicated we're just going to have that simple little drum pattern playing throughout most of the song with the exception of certain little breaks and stuff here and there but i want it to start out kind of like this so it's just going to be the drums and bass right at the beginning like this and then this is going to come in 
then finally we'll have the main guitar sound come in here. And then we'll have some parts where it's just the bass playing like this. And then we'll just have a few other little variations here and there throughout the song. One thing that you can do if you want to spice up your drum pattern a little bit is add in a little tom roll type of thing. You can just do a little pattern like this and then put it in like here or something. And then maybe just add that in like every eight bars or something. So yeah, at this point, we're pretty much finished with this beat. You can obviously add other little, you know, drum breaks and stuff. This isn't the way that, you know, every single post-punk song ever is. It's just kind of like a little generalization. And a lot of songs by The Cure, they actually use a synth. So if you want to put in some synth keys that follow the same chords that we use for the guitar, you can always do that. That might sound nice too. There's a million other things you can add. You know, obviously the genre itself was born from people trying new things and trying to come up with new genres and stuff. So if anything, the best thing you can do here is just experiment and play around with stuff. So yeah, that's pretty much going to do it for me in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. Make sure you guys check out my Instagram and my SoundCloud down in the description below, along with the playlist of songs I produce, my beats on my Discord, all that stuff. Go check it out if you guys want to. And I will see you guys next time. Baby, come follow me. We could go somewhere far.